Right now it's to be called the Rocks of Milton Free Water, although there's some discussion about that right now. It might change a little bit. Uh, anyway, I designed it to be what I think is the single most terroir-driven AVA in the United States. So 97% of the ground within the AVA boundaries is one soil type uh, called uh, the Free Water Very Cobbly Loam. And now you're standing on it. And it's on one landform, the Milton Freewater Alluvial Fan. It has a very small range of elevation. So in terms of its terroir, it is a unit, okay? And we, this morning we were looking at Napa Valley, Walla Walla Valley as an AVA, and they have within their boundaries hundreds of terroirs. So we really just have one terroir here, which I'm pretty excited about that, because uh, I really think that's what AVAs should be all about is you know, distinct terroirs. So anyway, what you're standing on are river rocks uh, that are essentially 100% basalt in composition, uh, basalt lava. Uh, this was washed down out of the Blue Mountains to our east by the Walla Walla River and deposited here in a landform called an alluvial fan. And this one is occupies about 3,000 acres um, and it fades off to the north and, uh, towards Walla Walla. And so we drew the boundaries of the viticultural area to surround the area that had these, these rocky soils. So what's great about these rocky soils? Well, they've grown orchards and vineyards here uh, since the late 1800s. Uh, I have records you know, I found for my ABA petition that talk, people were screaming about the, how wonderful these rocks were for growing vineyards and orchards back in 1916. Uh, and... I'll show you some vines that are still here that were from 1930s. Uh, it kind of got rejuvenated in the late 90s when Christoph Barone uh, was driving through here and noticed that it looked a lot like the cobblestones of Chateau Neuf de Pop in France. And he said, wow, it's just like Chateau Neuf. I've been to Chateau Neuf and I've done some terroir stuff there. And it's not just like Chateau Neuf. It's better than Chateau Neuf. <laughs> and I'm not just saying that because I love my backyard. I'm saying it because if you, I was in... Bocastel after a heavy summer rainstorm and water was standing in the vineyards and the rocks were poking out and I thought wow that's weird how can that be with these rocks you know it got to be incredibly well drained it turns out there's about that much rock at Chateau Neuf de Pop and underneath it is clay so the, it's not that well drained as Corey could tell you or anybody that has a vineyard here it could rain like Noah's flood here and there would be no water standing in these vineyards it's the cobblestones here are on the order of two or three hundred feet thick the soil and it's incredibly well drained which forces the roots deep and typically deeper rooted vines are associated with better better grapes there's some really uh, interesting uh, things about these rocks that, that are and I've done some research here I've done some crazy research here like wiring little temperature monitors inside grape clusters and bearing temperature monitors because I wanted to check into a phenomenon that you read about a lot of times, which is rocky soils are great for growing grapes because they heat up during the day and they keep the vineyard warmer at night. We say that, Jeff. That's crap. <laughs> That's so absolute, know, saying that, it's absolute <laughs> fundamental bullshit. So I got the numbers to, to show that is. So if you think about it, anything that heats up, and these rocks are already heating up, and the sun's not been out very long, uh, actually not heating up so much yet, <laughs> yeah. uh, but but in the in the summer, these rocks, I shot them with a thermal imaging thing and got temperature of 135, 140 degrees in July here. Anyway, so yeah, they, they heat up very quickly, but physics says that anything that heats up quickly also cools down. These quick. vineyards are no warmer at night than any other vineyards in the valley. In fact, because they're lower elevation and because the rocks radiate heat, in some cases, they're cooler than some of the valley. So you say, well, then what's the deal? Well, guess what? The deal is that during the middle of the day, they're radiating heat up to the vines. So the vines, and if there's fruit hanging, and especially if you trellis the fruit lower, they're heating up the grapes. And I've got data to show that the grape clusters here, when they're hanging about right here, get two or three degrees centigrade warmer than if they're hanging over grass. But, uh, but here, uh, since we can irrigate, uh, it's great to have hyper well-drained mm -hmm. uh, gravel. So Absolutely. this is a pretty special place. Um, you know, it does have an Achilles heel, which is 
uh, you see these uh, um, wind machines around here. It is kind of cold here sometimes in the spring and the fall, colder than these vineyards that you see setting up uh, in the hills.